Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. We're here in the studios in Palo Alto, California. Two great guests, Linda Tong, General Manager of Cisco App Dynamics, and Garrick Lin, Architect of Operations at Match.com. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're talking about App Dynamics, Match.com, and customer experience, mainly around cloud migration. So Linda, great to see you. And Garrick, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to see you again. Thanks for having us. So, Linda, you're a CUBE alumni. You've, we've talked about cloud migration, app, application performance, modern application development, all powered by the cloud, right? So this is really key and people are relying on the cloud and cloud scale and data to drive the digital transformation, the digital services and applications right now. How has the pandemic affected your customers and, and their expectations for digital experiences? Oh boy, I mean, the pandemic has been, it's been rough for our customers. Um, you know, and part of that is what Garrick's going to tell you a little bit more about today, but uh, folks are seeing this increase in expectance of, of accelerated speed and in delivering innovation, building great applications and iterating on them quickly. And frankly, their customers' demands for engaging with them through digital services. And that has led to this massive increase in uh, one, the types of technologies that they're consuming to build and deliver these applications, and two, the complexity upon how they actually wrap their arms around it and understand what's going on and deliver these great experiences. And so it's uh, it's been a rough road for our customers. And what we find with AppDynamics and Cisco is our ability to, to partner with our customers to help them wrap their arms around that complexity. Garrick, I'd love to get your commentary on this because obviously Match.com has been at large scale for many, many years. Uh, and now the pandemic comes in, now a new user experience, more accelerated, more action, more things are happening, right? So uh, this is truly the hybrid world coming together. I mean, it is kind of the same game, but kind of new patterns are emerging. What have you seen in the pandemic around expectations and the services that you guys are providing and the digital experiences? Yeah, sure. So, so uh, as you mentioned, Match has been around for quite some time. We've been here for over 25 years. Um, we have a, an interesting mix, uh, heterogeneous, uh, you know, uh, technology, uh, some old stuff, some new stuff. A lot of the mentality that we try to bring is is to innovate. Um, the pandemic was uh, it brought a lot of uncertainty. We weren't really sure how people were going to going to react. Was it going to be everybody kind of hunkers down? Um, dating definitely is something that you know requires human interaction and multiple levels. Uh, and uh, it turned out that. Uh, uh, um, people were still very much interested in getting uh, to a place where they can find human connections and you know, Match as a premium product tries to make that delightful. And so we had our hands full, uh, especially at the beginning, um, things like uh, you know, vibe check of you know, video features, um, how does that work? What are the expectations? Is that going to you know, creep people out if we try to you know, just you know, offer that? Is it, are they going to use it? You know, how are they going to date? How are they going to talk? How can we make sure that they're safe? All these kinds of things went into it, and so uh, when we you know, that have been using App Dynamics for you know uh, years now, uh, well before the pandemic, um, and you know we use that in order to be, get a gauge not just on the type of traffic and you know load, but also hey, we've got these new features. How do they fit into this huge complex environment? Um, and so uh, some of those timelines that maybe were a little bit more relaxed were very much accelerated, <laughs> and like a lot of companies, we had to figure out how to deliver on that. So. Yeah, Linda, I want to get your thoughts. We've talked about in the, in the past, App Dynamics has been a leader in really accelerating the value for customers. Now with the pandemic, you mentioned these new experiences are being pulled in from the, the physical world, right? So you have things that were happening on digital in the application space. Now you have more experiences coming in because there's no places to meet face to face. Now it's coming together, but people have been seeing the value. Wow, I, I can, if I can't meet in person, match.com, I'm going to do some things, new things online, chat, whatever this dynamic of old way, new ways changing and cloud is power in that. What are you seeing in terms of your customers' journeys around what was once pre-pandemic and now post-pandemic? Well, a big part of that is more and more of these experiences rely on digital services and, and this, these amazing sort of ways to connect with each other in, in a very digital space. Uh, expectations of customers have changed. So not only do you experience applications and you want it to be simple, easy to use, delightful, and it delivers on the needs that you want, but on top of that, you expect it to be performant, you expect it to be secure, you expect there to be, uh, frankly, no hiccups whatsoever, because now this is your way to connect with others. This is your way to find dates or go on dates. And the last thing you want is watching your screen pixelate as you're trying to have an important conversation. And these kinds of experiences 
Um, and these challenges, as, as people build more and more of these digital services to build these connections, frankly, require a lot more of folks like Garrick and his team. They now have to deliver amazing experiences with perfect performance, no security risks, no bumps in the night. Um, and that's, that's really tough, right? Expectations have gone through the roof. Yeah, you know, the whole story on that one point, just to kind of add live in this is that that whole concept of moving fast used to take months, right? I mean, weeks, months, now it's days and hours. So so months to weeks, days and hours. Garrett, this is the challenge. This is the opportunity with the cloud. Can you just take us through your cloud journey and your goals and some of the impacts that has had on your, your transition to the cloud? What does that look like? Yeah, so um, we, we've uh, had our on-prem uh, data centers for quite some time um, and we started uh, you know, putting our toe in, I guess, uh, although it was a, uh, kind of intense at the beginning, uh, just trying to get people on board and to say, hey, this is possible. We started out with a fairly small uh, SWAT team then managed within a couple of months, um, working closely with our developers. Uh, we have a lot of smart people uh, you know, in, in background, all of our security folks, all of our devs, um, to just demonstrate that we could do it. So we uh, managed to take something like 80% of our front end traffic for most of a day, just kind of spinning that up, learning lessons from that, knowing what we didn't know. App Dynamics, if we didn't have that, would have been almost impossible to get a read. Um, if for no other reason than uh, uh, just one little tidbit, we uh, used to have a data center in Virginia. Um, and so physics being what it is, um, you know, there's just been a flight that we have to contend with. Uh, and for a couple few years, we hadn't had the 30 millisecond or so uh, round trip latency on there. So all of a sudden we're going back to the cloud that reintroduced this latency. So what does that mean? Does that, you know, does, will the apps just sort of you know, glide by and absorb it? How do we track it? How can we figure out what the delta is between, you know, how, here's how we've done things on prem. Here's how it looks out here. Here are the cross, you know, calls, and you know, App Dynamics was what we used to to be able to get a read and say, hey, look, it isn't as good as we know we can make it, but it's something as a starting point. Here's why we can show you the graphs, we can show you the data. Let's do this thing. So um, we uh, then pulled back and uh, we have focused uh, this year on um, actually our Affinity apps, um, which is a, a collection of uh, applications that are also getting more into DLK, Chispa. Um, and uh, so we've uh, managed to get those completely migrated over. Um, we're going to be running in hybrid mode for a while. We're going to need to be able to compare apples to apples, apples to orangutans, all that. And, this is one of the main things we use. Yeah, and we just, use for that. if I can just follow up on that just real quick, because I think this is a good point. You got the data data points, you double down on that. You're looking at real data and then you look at the success and you double down. That's the playbook. So, and, and the other thing is that you guys actually have a real operation that's running full throttle too, right? So, you know, so I can see that, that nice balance. What does the future look like beyond that? Because you know, you got a business that's scaling, it's running, it's like changing the airplane engine out at 30,000 feet. You got to continue yeah. to push the envelope. Yep. So, um, and, and no, exactly right. Um, again, we're um, a premium product, and so we got to back that up, <laughs> and uh, that means you know maintaining high availability. Um, and so, uh, over the next uh, few years, you know, we're going to be looking at um, you know, what what can we, what have we already moved? What can we move um, in you know, piecemeal kind of way where it makes sense? What are the things that we can rethink? Um, we're also using App Dynamics as part of our containerization initiative. Um, you know, we've got lots of you know, virtual infrastructure, but you know, was again, what does it look like on prem in a container? go down the list of different things that might be different um, and then be able to compare that to what it, um, it looks like, you know, running in the cloud. So um, it's it's going to be a while yet, uh, but like a lot of companies, we, you know, when we got into this, we didn't think it was going to be done in six months. Yeah. Even if we have to deliver those features at, you know, a much faster rate, um, we know that the, the long haul, we got to make smart decisions and, and plan for capacity and, and you know, Get, get there. <laughs> it's real, that's a real pragmatic. That's a real pragmatic approach. Linda, you and I both are sports fans. We've talked in the past about sports and you know the old adage, "What inning are we in?" And in growth. It's uh, to use that baseball metaphor. I would say it's a double header. You know, game one won by the cloud. Game two uh, is happening now, and the trend is this end-to-end, -end mature, operationally focused customer base in IT, where IT has shifted to the cloud right now, and they're having this new view of what modern is end-to-end, -end, uh, understanding different stacks relative to applications. It's not as simple as it was before, um, but it's relevant. Can you share your views on how that's playing out? Because, or do you agree with that? And do you, do you see that as an important part of the customer? Yeah, I mean, I think it's that complexity that the IT organizations are seeing now as they fully adopt the cloud for all their new applications and start to migrate some of their existing applications over. 
that world is only increasing in complexity. The way that you can virtualize your applications, break them out into millions of services, the dependencies you have on third-party you know, applications or SaaS services, these things only add that many more data points that you now have to cover and think about and make sure that those things deliver upon their, their SLAs, right? And wrapping your arms around that requires a partner to help you separate signal from noise uh, because now you're you're going into a world where that simplicity that you just mentioned has gotten to some point where it's beyond beyond what you can actually sort of keep in your mind, beyond what you can just look at data and sift through and understand. You really need uh, tools and systems that come together and understand that data for you and start to represent your business to you in a new way and abstract away those layers of complexity. While you do that, because I think as you talk about those innings, that first inning and second inning, or rather first game, second in game in the series, it's not a full migration to the cloud, right? There are going to be some applications that stay on-prem, that stay in their traditional environments and may never move. And then some of them are going to go hybrid. Some will keep parts of the applications on-prem and they're going to start to modularize components of it. And so it's, it's not going to be sort of a, a, a mass scale migration and then we're all in the promised land and we deal with the cloud complexity. It's going to be ever increasing complexity as we now introduce so many variants of applications, so many variants of technology. And what people are going to need is someone who can help them cover that entire estate and understand it at scale. Yeah, I mean, so. I think it's the enterprise, enter, enterprise uh, um, conversion, if you will, of cloud operations on premises because of the reason, and now you got the edge. Uh, Gary, this is this is the whole kind of end-to-end -end stack conversation view. And by the way, there isn't one st end tech stack to rule them all because you have different use cases. You might have an application that needs a financial gateway or, or have other capabilities. So integration's huge. This only increases the point Linda was making about complexity behind the scenes. How, how does AppDynamics help you with this? For, for yeah, so, so we we have a you know, quite a bit of infrastructure. Um, you know, a lot of it is, ha is shared. Um, you know, while while still maintaining you know sandboxes for you know user uh, data and that that sort of thing. And so, uh, navigate navigating that space is is always interesting. Uh, so, for instance, you know, uh, one of the new things that we have coming out is a stir.com. It's uh, out there right now. It's a dating site that's geared towards single parents. It does share some of the infrastructure, um, but uh, you know, realizing what that means, how is that different? How are registration flows different? How are subscription flows different? Where are the things that Dev is actively trying to improve on and rethink? That's one of the things that we, you know, which we try to focus on when we're um, trying to kind of pick out like, is this a good, good candidate to move over to the cloud sooner or later? Is this a good candidate for something that needs to make, maybe bake a little bit more? Um, and having established those baselines with the shared infrastructure, having a pretty good understanding of how they react, how they work, really helps us, you know, tee up these these new initiatives and, and try to meet those needs um, in a more efficient way. So yeah, absolutely. What was some of what's some what's some of the activity you guys seeing? What's the peak activity on match.com these days? Yeah, so, so uh, data, uh, dating apps in general, but uh, Match in particular, uh, we um, use a, a nested or, or press fractal peak. Um, and it's a pattern that, uh, from what they tell me back in the old days, took a little while to realize was a thing and not just like, oh, we changed something and then it, this produced that. So every evening um, is, our, is our peak, basically. So the, with taking time zones into uh, account, at least in the United States, uh, from about five to you know 10 o'clock at night or so, we get these you know, rolling uh, you know, bursts of traffic. So that can be anywhere from, you know, from 23%. Sometimes Sometimes it, it kind of varies. Then we have a weekly peak where every you know, Sunday and Monday we expect a higher amount of traffic than we would other days, and it kind of makes sense from an archer psychology kind of standpoint, where you know you're coming off the of dates, you're trying to set dates up. Yeah. That's where a lot of that activity is. And then we have a yearly peak, um, which uh, goes from around Christmas to uh, President's Day. Believe it or not, it's President's Day. It's not Valentine's Day. Okay. Um, and uh, so that's. Um, that the sort of thing where when we're trying to plan for capacity and we do a lot of uh, what we call squeeze tests, where not quite chaos, chaos engineering, but hey, what does it look like if we go down in capacity by fifty percent? You know, what happens? You know, are, where are the weak points? Um, a January, you know, Monday night is very different from a uh, um, you know May. Thursday in June, you know, <laughs> so we have to you know, predict, we have to, we can anticipate some of that, but we don't know for sure, you know, and we don't know, a lot can change in a year. So when we're preparing for our yearly peak, we really have to pay attention. We have to prep, we have to, you know, plan for that um, and work with that to figure, figure out how we can, we can, you know, 
get through it and, and maintain that level of service. That's awesome, and App Dynamics is helping you do that. I'd love to get a bot to give me the optimal dating times to share with my single friends. Uh, great stuff. Linda, thank you for coming on. Great to see you. Congratulations on a great case study, great story. Um, how large scale applications and uh, are working in the modern cloud. So congratulations on your success. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Awesome, thank you. So great to be here. Okay, CUBE coverage of reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching.